thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 to 7, where we see Isaiah the prophet asking God to bring a revival to his land. What is a revival? I believe a revival is God revealing himself and renewing his renewing people in a certain land. Do we need a revival in America today? I'm sure all born again believers who have their eyes opened by God's grace through Jesus Christ will say definitely yes, we need a revival in our country today. God has put it on my heart pretty much every day to pray for America that there be a revival. But there are hindrances to revival. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 4 speaks of that. The, re- the, the hindrance that God will not bring revival to a land is sin. When people are in sin and disregard God, God will not bring revival to a land. Now, God has been gracious in the Western culture to bring revival in times past. George Whitfield was used by God in the 18th century to bring revival. Charles Haddon Spurgeon was used by God in the 19th century to bring revival. And I think today we need to pray in the 21st century that God will bring revival to our land. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people who call by my name will repent and confess their sins and turn from their wicked ways and pray and seek my face, God says I will heal that land. Let us pray for that, brothers and sisters. Here in America, there's roughly an estimated 90 million confessing American Christians in this country. They confess to be Christians. But could you imagine if all these 90 million professing Christians went to the polls and voted biblically, what would happen to our country? There would be no gay marriage. There would be no more killing babies, no more abortions. But the problem is, is that people today are religious. Religious people in this country think that they're Christians because they go to church once a week, um, drop a couple of coins in a bucket say a couple of prayers once a week on Sunday and then leave and go out and do what they want the rest of the week for themselves. That's not what it means to be a Christian. If 90 million people in this country were truly Christians that truly follow Jesus Christ, we wouldn't have a lot of the problems we have in our culture today. I hope and pray, brothers and sisters, that this devotional to help us all to really pray for revival in our country, that many will really come to God through surrender and submission to his will through Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. True revival will reveal itself when people are changed. There's obedience, there's zeal, there's generosity, and there's a mission spiritually to enhance the kingdom of God, evangelism, the the churches. You see, a lot in the news today is what's going on in the White House or the courthouse. But 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17 says that judgment begins with God's house. It's the Christians, it's those who follow Christ. To him much is given, much is required, our Lord Jesus Christ told us. And it's for us as believers to truly take our walk with the Lord seriously. When it comes to leaders in a land, we're not to criticize them. The Bible only tells us to pray for them. We're not to idolize them either. But the problem is in our culture today, it's the church. Quite often I believe that revival is is not coming to our land and God holds back revival because the people of God or sleep at the wheel spiritually. They think they're okay, but their motives, their intentions, their desires are not God-centered. They're me-centered. And I'm saying this for my own self. Often I have to examine myself. Yes, I can get on here and quote the Bible, read my Bible, read devotional, study Bibles that I have. But what good is it if I'm not living it out in my life, the way I talk, the way I think, What are the real desires and intentions of my heart? What am I thinking about during the day? Is it the ball game, the score? Uh, Is it who tweeted and what politician is after who and who's winning the, uh, these, these trade wars and everything else that's going on? Let us not fill our minds with all this junk. This is worldly stuff. Let us fill our minds with things above, as Colossians chapter three, verse one to five tell us. Feel free to share this devotional video, brothers and sisters. Subscribe to my YouTube page. Help others to join up as we get the Word of God out together. And may today, my brothers and sisters, may your minds be renewed individually as followers of Christ. And may God in His mercy have mercy on America and bring revival to our land again. Take care. God bless you all.